presidential candidate of the governing All Progressives uh, Congress, APC, Bola Ahmed Tinobu, spoke at the prestigious think tank Chatham House in London. Amid various questions and answers, Tinobu promised to tackle the deteriorating security situation in Nigeria head on so that the country can also effectively provide security support for its neighboring nations. Your Excellency, wonderful. The question I, I wanted to ask, you have touched on briefly. My name, first of all, is Baroness Tinoke Davis Kesenten. I'm a Nigerian. You've touched on security, very important issue in Nigeria. But you've not told us how you're going to manage this. We'd like you to tell us how you will manage security in Nigeria. And second part of my question, there's loads of kidnapping of women and girls in Nigeria, rape of our young children in Nigeria. Can you tell us, uh, Your Excellency, how this will be managed? Thank you. Uh, let me one, uh, once demonstrate here, one of those philosophers I wanted doctrine that I believe family in is teamship, unbreakable team. <laughs> to demonstrate that, I will choose the first question assigned to Dele Alake. Okay. And the second question assigned to Nasiru Erufai. Security has been a big issue in Nigeria in the last few years, and that has affected not only rural economies, but agricultural production, commerce, and everything else. Um, the Bola Tinubu administration will address these challenges, or whatever remains of it, after the efforts of this administration in at least three ways. First, policing. Nigeria has about 300,000 policemen for a population of over 200 million. We need at least twice that number. That will be achieved that will be achieved by amending the constitution so that policing can be at federal, state and even at community level. Okay, we're having another round of questions, so I start with the lady there. You, yes. Um, Nigerian in diaspora of over 40 years. I know we have remittances over 30 billion remitted to Nigeria from worldwide every year. And I do appreciate that the leaders, they do come every electoral cycle to speak to us in diaspora, but we can't vote. Is there any plans you have, sir? with regards to diaspora voting? I, 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 I think uh, it was Erufa last night that mentioned that diaspora voters are entitled to voting. If you make contribution to the economy with remittances that you have been making, your right to vote should not be abrogated but promoted. However, we are still build, building confidence in our democratic and vote, voting system. INEC is still yet to assure us during this election that electronic transmission, the technology being used for accreditation and the you know, total vote count is reliable, dependable, and assuring in our democratic process before we introduce a complicated element of mailing ballots and so My name is Priscilla Winkbo. Um, I'm a freelance and broadcast journalist. So you've spoken a great deal 
about what you've done in Lagos and yes, we're very aware of it and you're a team player because you're able to include everybody else and we appreciate your team here today and they're very capable and we can see that they have the capacity and the capability. However, sir, you are running for president and as Nigerians, we would very much like to hear from you because we believe the office of the president, if voted in, will be you and not your team per se. So For more on this, we're now being joined by a spokesperson to the All Progressives Congress Presidential Campaign Council and one time Minister of Aviation, Chief Femi Fani Kaudi. Chief Femi Fanekaude, thank you very much for joining us. Hello, Doctor. Nice to be here. Well, I mean, uh, I, I need to thank you uh, for joining us because I thought that it's this, uh, you know, position in your party uh, that Arise News should just be ignored. Uh, you know, I took a leap of faith inviting you uh, to be on Arise News, uh, which I thought your team had said, Oh, we can't go there. We can't touch them with uh, a 10-foot uh, pole, but you are here. Thank you for joining us. But first, let's start with this. Well, well, well thank, <laughs> thank you. Okay, you wanted to say something. Hello? Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I said, you know, you know, the fact of the matter is that you and I have been friends for, over f for almost 40 years now. And um, I have absolute trust in you. I have immense respect for you. And, of course, um, I didn't just come here just like that. My principal is fully aware and my colleagues and those that I'm involved with. Um, so I'm prepared to have a discussion with you. I had a secretary, I had a, I had a directorate of my own, over 200 people, and I'm prepared to discuss with you personally any day, any time, uh, because you are a good man and you're a professional. <laughs> well, thank you for the compliments, but let's go straight to business. The uh, appearance yeah. of your principal in Chatham House, and also subsequently on uh, BBC, have both been heavily criticized. First at Chatham House, the fact that he was sharing questions instead of uh, responding directly to the questions that were, you know, uh, you know uh, raised. And uh, people thought, well, if a man is interviewing for a job, he should show enough confidence, enough capacity to be able to respond to questions raised and not to share questions. So we have had people from the opposition, from the PDP, uh, criticizing this. We've even had, you know, a famous uh, comedian, Mr. Macaroni, uh, you know, making jest of uh, your principal. And then, of course, it went beyond that to grant an interview to Peter Kweche of the uh, BBC, when he would not even pay attention or, you know, accept any invitation from media organizations in Nigeria. Is he guilty of snobbing so the question? The electorate. Because the voters are I'm here. Sorry, they are I not. I get the last part of. No, I said, is he guilty of snobbing yes, yes, the yes. electorate in, at home? Because the voters are here. The media that you would need to uh, really engage with, you know, we have the media at home here. But he prefers to go to London. In fact, uh, two days ago, we were told he was even okay. going to America. And he changed his mind and he came back. Okay. All right. Let, 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 let me address these issues that you've raised. First and foremost, he was not addressing the Nigerian electorate from London. He was addressing Chatham House in London to an international audience who were then meant to disseminate whatever it is they felt about him and his performance to the rest of the world. Chatham House is not the Nigerian electorate. Chatham House is not a university, it is not a school where you have to pass exams, and Chatham House may have a format, but it is certainly entirely up to the person that appears there or chooses to respond to their invitation uh, to choose or opt for whichever format they are comfortable with. Uh, so there are no hard-drawn rules here. And as a matter of fact, you don't even have to go to Chatham House. It's not a precondition to becoming the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to go to Chatham House in the glorious United Kingdom and get some kind of approval. Now, he chose to go there, and he chose to go there to answer questions in the way he felt comfortable with answering questions. And what did he do? He answered some questions, perhaps the more difficult ones, 
and he chose to delegate members of his delegation to answer others in order to show that he has a collective form of leadership where he has bright young minds rising up that clearly will be part and parcel of his administration. He had some there. He has many back here that he didn't take with him, which he will take on other occasions, I'm sure. And I really don't think anybody can judge the ability of uh, a man like this with such a, an ex excellent track record over the last 40 years of public service and fighting for democracy on the basis of, of how or the format in which he answers questions in Chatham House. You mentioned the opposition. Well, what do you expect the opposition to do? Uh, they went to America. They went to France. They went halfway around the world to the Arab countries. Nobody saw them. Nobody spoke with them. And of course, when he appeared in Chatham House, that is uh, Vice President Atiku Abubakar, he got on the stage and spoke. I believe it was Chatham House. He got on the stage and spoke in London. And he read a speech uh, whilst he was there after a few minutes, he stopped and paused for one full minute. I was timing it. He couldn't go any further. Renoir Mokri had to get on the stage and help him out to either show him where he lost his reading ability, pinch him at the back, whisper in his ear, give him a kiss or whatever it was. We don't know what happened to him, but we didn't make an issue of it. Was it an ele element, was it, a, uh, uh, was it a reflective of some form of senility or some form of detachment from his mind? We never said a word about it. We moved on, we didn't make a political issue out of it. When you speak about men like Macaroni and others, these are comedians and it's great to be a comedian and one, people can crack jokes all the time. But to judge a man uh, and his ability and his performance based on the format he chose to answer questions in the uh, uh, Chatham House, I think is a little bit disingenuous. You spoke about the BBC as well, if I may quickly kill that one as well. I thought he did exceptionally well on the BBC interview. And of course, it put all our detractors to shame. They said he couldn't speak. They said he couldn't answer questions. And there he was in the foremost um, um, uh, international media house in the world, uh, being interviewed by a man, a professional of the BBC, who actually happens to be a Nigerian uh, uh, by origin, and he answered the questions in an excellent manner, proving to the world that he didn't need to delegate when it came to serious one-on-one -on -one issues. And he answered those questions very, very well, exceptionally well. And I think that we should give him uh, a lot of credit for that, rather than try to criticize everything he does, wherever he goes, what he wears, how he speaks, who he speaks to, and how he conducts his affairs when he's on campaign. You spoke finally, let me just add this, about addressing the electorate. Um, he has never said, he has never said that he will not address the Nigerian media. He does that from time to time. And at the appropriate time, I have no doubt whatsoever with the respect and affection that he has for Nigerian media, that he will grant a one-on-one -on -one interview, whichever media house he chooses to grant it with. That's entirely his decision. In the time that he'll do it is up to him. The campaign is a long one. We've just started. And he has immense respect for the Nigerian people. He has traveled to more states, done more town hall meetings, conducted more rallies, had more private engagements with people than any, in fact, than all the other presidential candidates put together. Go and check the record. And today he is still moving up and down, having only come back a few days ago. This is a man that some have the nerve to say is too sick, too ill, is mentally ill, is physically ill, is too old to do anything. And I think that is a cruel narrative which will, which will, will be shut down in February when we go to the polls and we win overwhelmingly. Well, I guess uh, who, who wins, who loses, that will be for the Nigerian people to decide. But let me ask you. Sure. Uh, one of your colleagues, uh, Festus Keyamo, as I cause to say that the People's Democratic Party should apologize uh, to the APC and your principal, Ashwa Jubala Metinumu, because of comments mm. that have been made by uh, Senator Dino Melaye, which he says, you know, are on democratic mm. uh, comments. But I thought that, look, spokespersons mm. have been reacting out of provocation. Uh, Dino Melaye, you know, in at least two recent uh, cases, had to come out you know, uh, to criticize your principal, first because of comments made by uh, uh, former Governor Adam Sushomale about his own principal, Atiku Abubakar, yes. and then secondly, oh. on this uh, Chatham House uh, out. So uh, it looks like all the political parties are not paying attention to what Nigerians are demanding, which is that the conversation should be about issues, but the conversation is more about personalities. And I guess all of you involved in this, I get to. 
What do you think? Well, first of all, let me yeah, first of all, let me say this. I completely align with my dear friend and colleague um, Festus Kayama's position. Um, I believe that the PDP really does owe uh, Ashiwaju an apology and indeed owe the Nigerian people an apology and owe the APC itself an apology. Because some of the sort of things they're saying, not just them, there are other political parties as well, the obedience, the P2B's party. They have focused totally on the personality of our candidate. That's all they've done. And if I list the sort of things they said, oh, Dino said he, he, he hides his wives. Dino said he has children, he named his children on television. Dino said that he never attended his own mother's marriage. Dino said this, Dino said that. His mother's the marriage? The hideous things about Ashiwaju's family. Yes, he, he, he spoke about his mother, he spoke about him not attending his mother's burial. Okay. He spoke about his wives, mentioning his wife, saying he was hiding his other wives, mentioned the names of his children on television and said, but we don't know their mothers. Went as far as to say the most hideous things about Oshimole and his private life and so on and so forth. We never started that. Unfortunately, you've, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. There are certain areas you don't touch, women and children, wives and children. I believe it was perhaps a mistake on our part for even talking about anybody being a serial divorcee. But that having been said, the response was disproportionate, unacceptable, and regrettable. And I think that, you know, Dino, who is a younger brother to me, I think he really did go too far. He went beyond the pale. Now, I will have to respond to that simply because he's made issues concerning our candidate's personal family. Uh, uh, family. First and foremost, uh, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tilumbu, just like he mentioned that his candidate has a wife of 50, year, of 50 years, and I'm very happy for them. Um, he didn't mention the fact that he has two other wives apart from the 50-year-old wife. He didn't mention a 50-year tenure wife. He didn't mention the fact that he's also a divorcee. He divorced one of his wives. But Ashiwaju has had a wife that's been very prominent, Senator Remy Tinumbu, for many, many years, a happy marriage. And every single woman that has had a child for him in the past has, uh, you know, has been either his wife or a, a respectable woman that has, has been married to him. So he, he, he has a good family. He keeps his children hidden, his other children hidden, or maybe two or three are known to the public. He doesn't have to expose his children to the public. He's certainly not hiding his wives. He's not hiding his children. Now, on the issue of attending his mother's burial, the, uh, of not attending his mother's burial, this was a specious and a disgusting lie. He did attend his mother's burial. He said he refused to attend his mother's burial out of shame. Which type of shame will a man like that have about his legacy, his name, his identity? Not only did he attend his mother's burial, he had buried her in style. And he buried her with dignity and with respect. And these type of lies I really don't think should be propagated on national TV about one another's family members. We shouldn't cross that line. And I, and I regret it that, um, that, 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 that that line has been crossed by Dino Milai. But let's be very clear about this. We've tried our best to stick to the issues. It is them that calls our candidate mentally deranged, physically deranged, too old, too sick, to this, anything he does. They say the most hideous things. We've tried to focus on the issues, but sometimes it is very difficult, especially when it becomes obvious that the personality and the activities of the, for example, the presidential candidate of the PDP become relevant. You know, precisely what his thoughts are, his actions are become relevant, but I won't go into the personality trait. I won't go down that avenue talking about people's wives and children. I will talk about the record. And when you're ready to ask me about what I think about Atiku and what I think about Pete Obi, I will tell you what I think about them in terms of their record, their credibility, and their personality. I no. won't talk about the wives and their children. No, since you have raised a question yourself, could you go ahead and assess mm. those two candidates, the candidate of the PDP and the candidate of the Labour Party? Okay, well, well fine. That, that's fair enough. Thank you very much for this opportunity. F first, of all, first of all, let me say this. Atiku is a man that's been trying to be the president of this country for the last, you know, since 1993. Uh, he's run in virtually every single presidential election or presidential primaries since 1993. And he has been a member of seven different political parties. He's a serial player and he's obsessed with this, obs with, with, with this objective. That's number one. Atiku is a man that has decided that regardless of the sign of the times, the feeling of the nation, and that the idea of power shift has now come and it cannot be stopped, 
He's gone against that, against his own Fulani brothers in the north, the majority of them, and said, regardless of the complica complications and implications of this, regardless of the fact that the whole country is screaming for a power shift, he has decided that he will go against the tide and insist that we should have a Fulani to Fulani succession, eight years of Buhari, eight years of another Fulani person. He did this by first of, well, regardless of the consequences and the implications, he did this by first of all betraying his own party, scuttling the convention, ensuring that the southern governors uh, were, 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 were pushed out and were denied the opportunity to produce wiki and upset everybody in his own party. So he divided his own party. That's the kind of man he is. He didn't stop there. He has a northern chairman in his party. Instead of him insisting that that northern chairman should step down, Again, he violated the constitution of his party, broke every single promise to everybody in that party, and supported Iyocha Ayu to remain as, pres as chairman of that party. That is the article that we're talking about. Again, let me go further. This is a man, apart from offending the governors of his party, apart from violating the constitution, apart from the chairmanship issue, this is a man that is sincere, deceitful, dangerous, and has betrayed everybody. Let me substantiate that. I was in the Obasanjo administration. I was a minister. I know what he did to President Olusegun Obasanjo. Throughout, the, throughout between 2003 to 2007, there's nothing he did not do to undermine that administration. Yet, he has the effrontery and his people have the effrontery to tell the whole world how wonderful an administration of Asojo was. And it really was wonderful, the best, in my view, that we've ever had in this country. Uh, but he spent all his time plotting on how to not just remove Obasanjo from power, but destroy Obasanjo and rubbish him. It was so bad that on two separate occasions, I, in open cabinet, challenged him in front of the president of the cabinet and asked him to leave the uh, cabinet chambers for betrayal and treachery. That's the kind of man Atiku Abubakar is. Let me go on, uh, one more step before I stop. Look at what he did to Jonathan in 2015. We were all in the PDP at the time. Atiku Abubakar led five governors out of the party. They went and joined the opposition party. They supported President Buhari to become president at the time. They, 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 uh, there's nothing um, Jonathan did not do or promise them or beg them for that, look, come back, we'll settle everything. No, he did not do that because he wanted to spite Jonathan and spite everybody around Jonathan. He joined the other side with five governors. They went and they ensured that Jonathan lost. The same Jonathan that had done so much for him whilst he was in the party and the same party that had offered him the position of vice president for eight years. That's the kind of man Achiku Abubakar is. And that is why I think it would be very dangerous for anything to support him. Now, let me ask you this question. His farms, his university, his assets, everything, none of them have been attacked by ISWAP or Boko Haram throughout this period, in fact, since the inception of this problem in 2009. You ask yourself, how come he seems exempt from this? Everybody in the North, and well, I've lived in the North for 22 years, has he, been affected, he, except for Atiku. Let me just end on this one, then we'll start again. Okay, none, none has touched him. The reason why is because many feel that he needs to explain his relationship with people like um, uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Gumi, uh, who is in Kaduna, who is the chief defender of the kidnappers, who campaigns for him, who travels around private jets for him, and the young man that's now in detention who has been accused of terrorism. Well, what is his <coughs> link with these people? That is the sort of thing at Chikwa Chief, Chief has Chief and that is Fanikari. another reason why I think Chief, we need to be Chief very Fanikari. careful. I, I guess it's natural for you to demarket uh, those who are competing with your principal. No, 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 As no. For no, some no, no. of the issues sorry, you doctor, raised. Can I, can I just say, can I? Can I no, it's can, a natural can, thing to can do. I, can I just say, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You know, it's not my habit to interrupt. I, I am a polite person. But may I just say this, uh, if, if I may? I don't seek to demarket him at all. All I seek to do is present the facts. And I'll just tell you one more fact, and then you can tell me whatever you think I'm doing wrong, okay? One that pained a lot of us was this. A young lady by Deborah was killed in Sokoto recently, was butchered, okay? Uh, the president of our country offered his condolences to the family and did the right and proper thing before the entire world because it became an international issue. It was a barbaric killing. Um, Atiku Abu Paka tweeted his commiserations, then chose to withdraw that tweet and refused to, to, to offer condolences to the family. Is that the mad kind of man that you think can protect the rights of Christians well, if he's in power? About Unlike facts. Tinumbu, whose wives, whose... Well, that's a fact. That's a fact. 
unlike Tinumbu, last fact before I stop, unlike Tinumbu, who married, who, who's, who, you know, whose wife is a Christian, he did not insist she should become a Muslim before they got married. Atiku Abubakar insisted that his two wives must drop their Christian faith, two of them, and become Muslims before they could get married. So the question I have to ask is this, are people, do people, don't, do people not have a right to ask these questions, and so many more that I have here, about him and about his candidacy. There are so many issues. Okay. I will stop here for now okay, and Chief, let you come yeah, in and yeah, I will Chief continue. Anikari, well, I don't want to speak uh, for anybody, but I'm aware that uh, most recently, mm -hmm. uh, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party sent a delegation uh, to mm -hmm. President Goodluck Jonathan to seek his support and his uh, solidarity. And that delegation was led by the governor and of Delta State, and uh, PDP running mate, uh, uh, Senator uh, Ifani Okoa. Okay? And of course, okay. some of the issues you have raised, I'm sure uh, Dino Melaye and Co., you know, they must be watching, and, you know, in good time, they would uh, put up their own defense. But there have also been criticisms of your own uh, candidate. One, about the Muslim Muslim ticket, about his claim that he is the Messiah mm -hmm. of Lagos, about his expression of his sense of entitlement mm. as a Yoruba man and as a man who is the mm. architect of mm. modern Lagos and all of that. And then also about the fact that, look, yes, people may say power should shift, but how does he hope to win? You know, considering the fact that the majority of voters are from the Northern part. But you wanted to talk about the candidate of the Labour Party too. Uh, well, you, if you could do that very briefly, no. but you have to respond um, more to criticisms okay. of your own candidate, Thank you. particularly with regard to his identity, his education, his background. All right. Please go ahead. Okay. All right. Let, 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 let me say, I'll come to that right now, but let me just, let me just quickly say this. Um, before, you, you, you said that they went, the PDP, and uh, they went to um, President Jonathan, and President Jonathan was very quick to point out to everybody that cared to listen that he's an elder statesman. I can assure you, Jonathan will never support them. Obasanjo will never support them because they know the kind of person Atiku Abubakar is. However, they're elder statesmen that will stay out of the fray, but they will never get, they will never give their support to a man like Atiku because they know him very, very well. Now, you spoke about Lagos State um, and his efforts in Lagos State. Look, it's self-evident and this is for all to see. And let's not start at Lagos. Let's go back. How was this democracy that we are enjoying today established in the first place? How? It was established by the struggle and the spilling of the blood of the leaders of Nadeku. A lot of young people today know nothing about that. And Ashiwaju was f right in the forefront of that, of that struggle. You yourself, Ruben Abati, you are part of it, and so many other people. But Ashiwaju was one of our revered leaders. I was in exile, you were locked up, Oshutoku was, was running around, everybody was doing their own bit, and our people were being killed. Ashiwaju Bola Tinumbu supported the struggle, funded the struggle, and did everything he could. That's where he started making his bones. Whilst he was doing that, he was still flourishing in the private sector abroad. He came back to Nigeria, was elected governor. When he came, I was born in Lagos. By God's grace, I'll be buried in Lagos where my, buried, my parents are buried. I lived there all my life, okay? Now, Lagos... You know what it was like in 1999 when he came in. You know what the money was generating, 700 million, I don't know what it was, per month or something like that. Today, Lagos generates, I, 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 I will not say the figure because honestly, I think it's billions and billions uh, per month. It is internally generated revenue. The GDP is the third highest on the African continent. And people say, okay, he was only there for eight years. The people that came in after him, from Fashola to Ambody to Somolu, every single one of them was a protege of this man. He created them. God used him to create them. God ensured that he put them in power. He encouraged them. Some stood by him. Some started misbehaving and then came back and begged him. And they are there till today doing an excellent job. Today, Lagos is a delight for the African continent and the black man. Nobody can take that away from him or his successes in government. And that is what speaks for him. Not just Lagos. He put a vice president in power. He nominated a vice president, Yami Oshibajo. He nominated so so many other people, the Speaker of the House, one of his protégés. What Tinumbu does that many other leaders have not managed to do in the past is this. He ensures that he identifies talents, he supports them, he stands by them, he puts them in key positions of power, and they always do well. Others, 
leaders, you support them, theirs is once they're out of office, they want to destroy you. That's the difference between him and so many. And whether you like him or whether you hate him, you cannot take that away from him. Now, these, this record and so much more, for example, stabilizing this country when it was that the country was so divided that had it not been for his efforts, there's no way the APC could have won that election in 2015. I was on the other side at the time. I know what he did. He ensured that the CPC was backed by the ACN at the time, and he brought his, his to the table and brought Nigeria together once again, and we had a northern president. We should thank, everybody should thank him for ensuring that that's, that election was won by Buhari, at least those that were on that side at the time. This is what he managed to do for Nigeria. And then finally, let me say this. Over the last seven years, there have been a lot of provocation in this country, secessionist agitations, for many reasons, some good, some bad. People are not happy because so many things have gone wrong. But Sinubu has refused to line up with those that says, let's give up and let the Yorubas go, let the Igbos go. If he had done that, I'm telling you, it would be a different story. He said, no, our time will come. I will be there, I will do my best, I will unite this country, I will bring everybody together, and we'll be one again. And that's why we're supporting him, that's why we want him to do what he wants to do. Now, I'd rather talk about that and focus about that, and about his good health, and it is good, about his brilliance, his natural brilliance, you know very well, talk to him one-on-one, -on -one. you know how brilliant he is. All those things, rather than, oh, what did he say when he went to Chatham House? How did he look? What did he wear? What did he do this? How old is he? Uh, when he was at uh, primary school, which primary school did he go? This man went to university. University has confirmed it. University of State, State University of Chicago. This man was never involved in the drug business. He was absolved and vindicated. The Americans said it. One million dollars was given back to him. You now say Muslim, Muslim ticket. A man that has more Christians in his house, a Muslim, who's, who's, and the buck will stop at his death. You say he's against, you say he's going to, uh, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, Islamize this country, a man that gave churches more land than any other uh, uh, governor of Lagos State, all those mega churches, he gave them the land, he supported them, and his wife is a Pentecostal pastor. That is what I want to talk about. These efforts he has made for this country, and I believe that he has earned the right to be considered by the Nigerian people for this position, and I think it's wrong that all the parties, whether it is Labour, whether it is PDP, even parties that are nothing, come together, and sections of the media, I have to say this, come together, and morning, day, and night, all they do is talk about this man. You know why? Because he's the issue. He is the only issue. We're going to win this election hands down. You spoke about where can we win. Listen, let me give you the analysis very quickly. We will win hands down in the southwest. When it gets to the North Central, we'll win hands down in Kogi State, where we have the White Lion. Where we, when it comes to Niger State in the North Central, we have people like Senator Sani Musa and Abu Lolo, the governor. We will win hands down there. Nasara, hands down. Um, 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 Kwara State, hands down. We will clear the whole of the South. We'll clear at least 70% of the states in the, south, in, in, in the North Central. Go to the Northeast. Borno is ours because our vice comes from there. Yobe is ours because we have a great governor there. Um, uh, Gombe is ours. And Bauchi is coming to us as well because I know the governor, and I know very well that he's not happy with the way in which Atiku has behaved, and he will go wherever Buhari tells him to go, and he has said so publicly. Go to the Northwest. Is it Kaduna that we will lose with our Rufai there and with Ubasani as our governorship, governorship candidate? We'll trounce them there. Is it, is it Katina we will lose with Buhari there? Is it, uh, is it uh, Matawale State, Zamfara we will lose? That's three so far. Where are we going to lose? We may lose one or two, one or two, but I'll tell you what, even in Sokoto, with Wamako's work, and so on and so forth, there will be a shocker. Where are they going to get the votes? Obi has taken their votes in the southeast. Obi has taken many of their votes amongst the northern Christians. Where is PDP going to get the votes? If they're not careful, they may end up coming third, a distant third to the obedience, and not even coming second. But we will win. We will win gladly. We will win happily. And we will unite this country afterwards. Well, uh, Chief Femin Fanekaode, I mean, uh, politicians are optimists. Even when they are not yet in office, they start calling themselves Your Excellency, Your Excellency. So uh, I expect every Some politician will, logic. Be, will, be, will, be very <laughs> will be very optimistic. But why does your... You and I are very close. I don't play that <laughs> game of optimism, my brother. You know very well I, I, I do do my work based on empirical evidence. But let's wait and see. It's just a question of but why. But why does your candidate feel so entitled when he's asked about other presidential mm. candidates? He will say they don't exist. That is the only one uh, that is in the game because those ones don't well, have any capacity. Okay. Why does he feel entitled? Why does he say okay. Emilokon? Even when many of his own people in the okay. Southwest let, let, do let, not let, think let, that yes, it sorry. is his turn. Mm. Mm. 
Well, let me, let me answer that very quickly, okay? I mean, it's very easy. Well, first of all, I don't think he has that sense of entitlement. If he did, he would sit in his house and not go on campaign. I've told you, this man at his age, literally, I mean, even I can't keep up with that. There are some people that follow him around everywhere. I can't do it because the amount of energy that goes into what he's doing, I find it amazing. He's working hard at the grassroots to win those votes. Going from community to community, working hard morning, day and night. Doesn't sleep through the night. I'll tell you a secret today. Hardly sees before 3 a.m. and he's always up by about 7 a.m. That's a secret I've just told you. Go and go, go and quote me on that one. That's how hard this man works. Now, he's working hard. I don't call a man that is working that hard with a man with an entitlement mentality. He has no entitlement type. He believes in sheer hard work, and he also knows that his record will speak for him. So he's not interested in talking to the naysayers. He's interested in going to the electorate. But let me also add this. Why won't he say that? I've already highlighted to you some of the atrocities that Atiku has committed. I didn't talk about Volpi in the late 80s, where it is alleged, and I'm not saying it's happened, that he was involved in drug business with Mr. Volpi. I never spoke about that. But there are so many things. I've told you about that. But look at Pete Obi, for example. How can he consider Pete Obi as a serious candidate? When the same Pete Obi was issuing ID cards to Northerners when he was governor of, of Anambra State, and when you as a Northerner did not have an ID card, he'll ship you in, in, in cow loads out of the state and deport you. This same Obi has a symbol of Biafra on his beer can, which he's selling for commercial purposes. What does that tell you about him? This same Obi would not allow non ebos to buy stores or buy markets in, or buy stores or shops in, in, in markets in, in Anambra State. This same Obi, and this is very important, refused to condemn the killings that were taking place, are still taking place, of our security personnel and our people in the eastern part of this country, even as at yesterday, he has never condemned those killings. This same Obi has refused to give refused to give Pentecostal churches and you Pentecostals, I am one. Listen to this carefully and go and cross check it. Go and verify, as he always says. When he was governor, he refused to give any Pentecostal church land to build their churches on in his state. It was only Catholics. That is how selective Obi is. I could go on and on. I spoke about allegations against him in Malaysia, in Malaysia and so many other things. This is an Obi that has a running mate who said publicly that he would kill everybody that has, you know, that 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 that, that is, a, is is a homosexual or uh, is a member of the uh, of the gay community. That if he had his way, he would kill all gays. Now, the question I'll put to him is this: If that's the case. They have a DG, and maybe I shouldn't go in that direction. It's not fair to talk about my friend Doyo Kupe like that. But, but he, uh, Dati Ahmed said they would kill members of the, uh, of the homosexual community. Barbaric and totally unacceptable. How will Ashiwaju not say that? When Pete Obi has a running mate who was talking about, for example, Margaret Thatcher on national and international TV and had the stupidity to say that Margaret Thatcher led the United Kingdom in the 1950s, Margaret Thatcher was a member of the Labour Party, Margaret Thatcher was the person that created the welfare state in the United Kingdom and at the same time Jeff. helped the unions. Jeff. When everybody knows Margaret Jeff. Thatcher Jeff. led Jeff. the UK in the 80s, Jeff. Margaret Jeff. Thatcher destroyed the welfare state and Margaret Thatcher was a Jeff. member of the Conservative Jeff. Party. So these are the kind of people that want to come and take power, for goodness sake, no way. Well, I have no, I'm very, very happy that Ashiwaju knows who he is, what he is, the level he's playing, and will continue to go to the polls. Well, Chief uh, Femi Fanica, <laughs> Nigerians are concerned that, uh, yeah. you know, the candidates and the surrogates, the, the abuse, the rhetoric, there's so much violence. Yeah. You know, and our fear is that, look, we hope this thing will not gener degenerate into physical violence. In many of the states now, governors, oh. sitting governors, don't allow the opposition parties, you know, to even campaign. And yet, you know, there was a peace oh. accord, oh. although your candidates did not sign that peace oh. accord. And, uh, you know, people have been saying, you yes. know, it was absent at a very important uh, oh. uh, occasion. Oh. Uh, oh. Really, I mean, uh, is it that the surrogates, people like you, you are director of media, special operations. Uh, you know, people like you get blamed on all fronts. Well, Either it's the Labour Party or you. the PDP sure. as the main problem. Because you guys are far more aggressive than all your right. principals. No, no, let me, let me just say this. Um, Ruben, thanks so much. But 
first, I'm not a surrogate. I, I, I'm simply a director in his campaign organization, and there are many other directors, and we vary in our style. I'm simply putting the argument, and I join issues, which is what I enjoy doing, and which is what I'll continue to do. And I will expose those I consider to be our adversaries, especially when they throw bricks at us. I'm a real gentleman, as you know, if you don't throw a brick at me or mine. When they throw bricks, we must respond. And we don't respond with bricks. We respond with facts. Let me give you one quick fact again, which is bound to upset people, which is one of, one of the reasons why people have so much rage about the Article presidency. He said he wants to sell all the assets in this country. He wants to sell everything. Listen, I want every person that is not a man of means to listen to this. He wants to sell all our assets in the country. And you know what? He'll sell it to his cronies and his friends, many, one of whom I know personally was, you know, was using shareholders' money and stole shareholders' money from his bank. These are the kind of people Atiku wants to hand over all our national assets to. So why will people not be serious about this thing? And let me tell you why people are upset. Because if we don't get it right this time round in 2023, and we don't make the right decision, we don't have power shift, we don't have an economy put back in place, we don't have leadership that promises unity, peace, love and joy for everybody, and is prepared to bring everybody together. If we don't achieve that, Nigeria will be in mortal danger of not staying together for much longer. If we don't have a man like Tinumbu, the secessionist movement will get stronger. If we don't have a man that's prepared to look at everybody with compassion and love and kindness, then we really are in trouble in this country and fix our economy. He's done it in Lagos, he's done it elsewhere, He's been patient. He's been focused. He has never responded to anybody with any form of abuse directly because he feels he needs to be focused. And that's the kind of man we need. And so when people start talking about these characters, I've mentioned them. I've told you some of the questions they have to answer. And they want to come in and they're muscling us, threatening us. Listen, my directorate, the females in my directorate, I said 200 people in my directorate, many of them are young ladies. Do you know? And those from the East are threatened every day by people from uh, P2B's camp. Their lives are threatened, they're threatened with rape, they're threatened with murder. I have evidence of it. We've reported this to the police and DSS. We have not responded. We are a peaceful party, a peaceful party, a peaceful group of people who simply want to run an election and win the election. And we, are, we will not ask the hard questions. There is one hard question I will ask of Atiku, and that will be done only when I'm face to face with one of his spokesmen or himself directly. That is a fundamental question about his views as regards sexuality and so on and so forth. And I will ask that question because that is a relevant question that is asked in every election all over the world by well, everyone. Chief, you go Chief, to America, Chief. you find out what are your views Chief, about this and that. Chief, but Fanny I will leave the, I will leave that one to late. For now, we've touched the issues and we move on. Well, Chief Fem uh, Femi Fanekade, you keep saying what your principal has done in Lagos. Well, I'm sure members of other political parties yeah. will say Nigeria is not Lagos. Okay, and the time it was in Lagos yes, was another you, time. Yeah, sure. They, yeah. So I, I want sure. us to wrap this up because we can go on and on. Uh, you spent okay. a lot of time talking about Atiku, okay. sure. talking about Peter Obi. You did. Can you, you in just about one minute tell us yeah. what exactly that is original okay. that your candidate mm -hmm. wants to do for Nigeria? Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruben. Well, let me start by saying, first of all, the revenue base of our country will be increased enormously because he has shown with what he did in Lagos State when he was governor that he managed to increase the revenue generation base. And he will translate that to the national level. And you can imagine the implications of that. He's also placed an emphasis on, on energy, the provision of energy, something he wanted to do in Lagos State when he was governor. Sadly, the federal government at the time, which I was a member of, I might add, uh, frustrated every effort to ensure that he didn't. He didn't achieve that. Well, he wants to do that now, and he wants to do it at the national. He has identified the fact that power is essential for development, and he's absolutely right. He will ensure we have power everywhere. Quite apart from that, he wants to ensure that jobs are provided for Nigerians by getting the economy back on its feet. How do you get the economy back on its feet without ensuring that credits, credit system is fixed? In other words, banks will give money to people to build up businesses at a reasonable rate. That is what he intends to do. He keeps talking about that. We meet regularly. He talks about that so that people have, a, have an opportunity to make a life for themselves and do things for themselves and create wealth for themselves. This is a man that has the experience in both the private and the public sector that has done exceptionally well. And this is a man that, in all honesty, has uh, the kind of intellect and understanding of the nature of the country that, 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 that will ensure the country moves forward. But finally, let me say this. This is a man that has restraint. There is nothing some of us have not said about Tinumbu in the past. There are some that are close to him now that have fought him in the past. 
There are some that never fought him before, that are close to him, but there are some that he helped so much that are now fighting him. He has never expressed one word of anger towards any of these people. Because what he tends to do is focus on his goals. He's patient, he's reasonable, he's rational, he's kind, and he's very, very focused. And that's the kind of president we need. Tolerant to men of other faith and women of other faith. Tolerant, open, and accessible to everybody. That's the kind of president that we want. And he's not vindictive, unlike some that I could mention that are in this race. Well, he needs to hurt nobody note. and he will not hurt anybody. Yes, that's, that's why I'm supporting him. Thank you. Well, on that note, I'd like to thank you very much, Femi Fanika, the Director of Media, Special Operations mm -hmm. of the All Progressives Congress Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you for joining us.